Welcome to the demonstration of NetSuite WMS for mobile receipt and put away. I'm in a warehouse manager role, one of the many roles included with NetSuite WMS. I'll be toggling back and forth between the NetSuite desktop and mobile RF handheld device interfaces throughout the demonstration. My dashboard allows me to identify and monitor my work for the day, week, or other relevant time periods. For example, I can see I'm expecting a couple of purchase orders to receive today. Upon clicking into one of the open purchase orders, I can see here that the purchase order is in a pending receipt status and it contains each a Velocity A inventory item, a Velocity B inventory item that requires some inspection, and a Velocity C lock controlled item. As a warehouse operator, I'll access the mobile RF handheld device so that I can process the purchase order receipt when the truck arrives at the warehouse. Upon login to the device with my NetSuite credentials, I'll be displayed locations to which my role has permissions. I'll select my US-1 location and navigate to the proper receiving workflow. Notice that I can also perform mobile receipt of transfer orders coming from other locations, inbound containers coming from overseas, or returns coming from customers. Upon selecting to receive the purchase order, I can either enter the purchase order number, scan the purchase order barcode, or list and select any purchase orders pending receipt. On any of these screens, I can configure the screen to display the desired columns and or filter by any content displayed in the columns. Here, I'll go ahead and select my purchase order. For each item on the purchase order, I will scan the item, UPC, or other accessible barcode which will populate the text box here. In general, leading practice is to suppress these hyperlinks and force the operator to scan the barcode. If I have any orders waiting on this item for commitment and fulfillment, it will automatically reflect in a backorder quantity, which can be used as a decision-making tool for crosstalk opportunities. To confirm I'm receiving the proper item, I can use my information tool and view an image of the item. Now, let's suppose this item shows up in cases of 12 rather than H's. I can simply update the unit of measure to case 12 and enter the proper case quantity. If needed, I can print item and or pallet labels directly from the mobile as part of the receiving process. Here, I'll receive into one of my configured inbound staging bin locations. Upon selecting the desired bin, I'm returned to receive additional items on the purchase order. Notice that my received item is accessible on the show completed toggle. Continuing on with my next item, I'll scan the item barcode. The mobile RF handheld device indicates to me this item requires inspection. Therefore, I'll update the inventory status to inspection status, enter the full remaining quantity, and select my inbound stage 02 bin location. In this case, I'm keeping the inspection inventory separate from the good or not requiring inspection inventory in my inbound receiving area. Finally, upon scanning my last item, the system recognizes it as lock controlled and in doing so automatically prompts me to enter scan really the lot number and expiration date. If I leave the expiration date blank, the system will calculate it based on the receipt date plus a shelf life configured on the item master. Suppose this pallet contains two lots. The total pallet quantity is 120. I'll receive quantity 100 each of my first lot into my inbound stage 01 bin location. The system indicates that there's still quantity remaining to receive for this item. I'll go ahead and scan the item, scan the second lot number and expiration date detail for my pallet, enter the remaining pallet quantity in eaches, and receive into my inbound staging 01 bin location. The mobile screen indicates that everything has been received in its entirety. When we go back into the desktop, we'll go ahead here and refresh the purchase order. You'll see that the transaction status updates, as do the received quantity values on the purchase order lines. If I go ahead and drill into my lot numbered item, note that the inventory detail values reflect the relevant quantities and lots I received into my inbound staging 01 bin location. Now I'm ready to put the inventory away. Coming back into the mobile RF handheld device, I'll go to Main Menu, Receiving, Put Away, and here I'll start with the good stuff in my inbound stage 01 bin location. I'll scan my Velocity 8 item, enter the proper 
input away quantity, and upon doing so, the system will return bin locations based on my item attributes. This particular item does have a preferred bin location, so that's listed first, in addition to other locations in my velocity A overflow zone. Here, I'll go ahead and put away into one of my eligible overflow bin locations. Moving on, I'll continue putting items away from my inbound stage 01 bin location. I'll scan my lock controlled item. Here, I'm given the option to either re-scan each of the lots and put them away one by one, or since we have two lots in one pallet that are likely going to the same storage location, I can use put away all. Upon selecting the put away all button, the system recognizes this is a velocity C item and returns bins in my velocity C overflow zone. I'll go ahead and scan to one of my velocity C overflow bins. Moving on to the inventory in my inbound stage O2 bin location. I'll scan the item. Note that the system still recognizes that this inventory is status inspection. Go ahead and enter the quantity. Upon doing so, the system uses the inventory status attribute and returns bin locations in my inspection zone. We've successfully put away all of our inventory. Thank you for watching this demonstration. If you have any questions, please reach out to your account manager.